Hey gang, it is October. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's after work time, but it's also hump day. That means it's happy hour for the dinks. So welcome to Dennis in the Know. This is your backstage pass at current trends, politics, and education in the dental world. I'm Dr. Jeff Horowitz. That's Dr. Chad Duplantis. That's Dr. Jennifer Bell. We are all practicing dentists. We're all educators and we are all business owners. Our job is to bring you in the know. On Dinks tonight is a fellow Coist graduate. He streamlined uh, virtual cosmetic consultations and that's made his clinical time more productive. Dr. Rob Soto is with us. So you're gonna wanna stick around through the news and listen to Rob because he's going to share some of the, some of his experience. So I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about the new. Uh, we can't really call it a stimulus bill. It's a it's a reconstruction bill. It's a the 3.5 trillion dollar thing that's up in Congress. So I think that it's really important that a few of us know there's actually some good stuff in there that I hope maybe stick around and there's some uh, stuff that will directly impact all dentists. So I think it's important to, to know a few of the things that are in there. So the first thing is there is a section in there about a mandatory program. Um, so I would encourage our um, viewers and I'll post a link tomorrow from a Forbes magazine article um that came out yesterday there is an embedded section in there if you have five or more employees you now have a mandatory retirement component if that bill gets passed you have to provide retirement options and funding for your employees which as we understand for for those of us that are currently doing it um that there's a lot of expense incurred in that and if you have a smaller practice that for, for new dentists that's really it's almost be, impossible. And frankly, for small businesses, especially with transient, like restaurants and other places where, you know, it's very frequent that people come and go pretty quickly and, and that they move on to other jobs. And so trying, it's also an administrative nightmare to keep up with previous employers and past employer employees and moving money around. And we still have some employees on our 401k plan who haven't worked for us for years, but they don't, they won't move it out of our 401k plan. So it, it, it becomes kind of this administrative burden as well. So I would really encourage you, I'll send you the link so you can look at it. Um, but there, there's some heavy components to it. There's a match program that's required in there as well. It's a tiered investment from employees also, which, you know, it doesn't really uh, successfully address what do you do with your employees that are living paycheck to paycheck? And, and now you're forcing withholdings for that. And anyway, there's a lot of nuances and administrative burden that I think we should understand and, and pr probably be lobbying against so that employers can continue to make that decision based on what's fiscally responsible uh, for them as well as for their employees. So that's one of those little hidden gems, as we like to say um that that's embedded inside this large bill um that can, has I, can i ask it or can i air i guess it's airing another grievance more than it is asking a question does it not seem like so many of the policies that are coming out whether it's intentional or not are really just always favoring the larger corporations versus the small business owner and JV's out again. She fell asleep again on me, Chad. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with you there, Jeff. And I think that if that does pass, we utilize a service that offers <clears throat> all of our HR for us. And I'd love to have them on if that if that bill does pass. And it's something that we need to navigate through because they're really good at navigating through that for us. Um, it, it covers our health insurance, any kind of fringe benefits that we offer and whatnot. And uh, that's something that we could revisit. But yeah, I think it does favor the larger corporations. It's, but it's it like we're moving, we're, we're moving our population away from the entrepreneurial spirit as right. a, as an independent business owner. And that that's really scary. Like if, if those mandates had been there for me starting my practice from scratch, I, I mean, there were, I mean, 
I went so long before I even took money out of the practice. We were living on Ginny's, on, on her salary as a teacher. You know, that was basically our income when I first started my practice. And then even once it got going, you know, how much can you take out? when you're trying to build and grow the practice, there was no way I could have done that back then. No, yeah. this no, it's is going to be this tough. going to be a small business killer. Go, go DSO. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So, I just no. had to air one more grievance. Absolutely. So I, I think it's something to continue to watch and I'll keep you posted. I will, I will post the article that was put out there. So at least you can get some underlying uh, understanding of, of what's proposed. Um, and there are other states currently that are operating similar types of bills out there. And so that, you know, <clears throat> could be an example of what that's going to look like. So um, these are the little things that, you know, get passed, kind of like the healthcare bill that kind of got funded before it actually got passed. And this is a similar thing. It's actually getting passed as a tax because if you don't comply, it becomes a tax. And so that's how they're passing it in this um, tax and budgetary uh, reconciliation package. So um, so there was a couple good things in there. One, the original proposal for capital gains going in was really high. I think that's going to settle down pretty on the lower side. 25% is what the current projection is. So that's much better than the original 40 or some odd percent that was originally proposed. And um, two other things, the SALT credit, which most of us don't, don't get the advantage of anymore, which was the itemized deduction. So that allows you to, to write off your property tax and, and some of the other things that you're paying. In North Carolina, for instance, that was capped at just, it was capped at a certain amount, regardless of your, um, the amount that you paid. And in North Carolina, they didn't do anything to change that. And so we, we in particular have been hit pretty hard with the inability to write off property tax um, on our tax filings. If the SALT portion of that gets reinstated, then for most of us, that's advantageous for itemized deductions. We'll be able to go back and start relooking at those things as well. And the tax child credit, which, um, many of us income out of um, the, the limit on that is going up pretty substantially as well um, to be able to utilize tax credits on that as well. So uh, pluses and minuses on both sides, I think financially for everybody. Um, and so that's, that's your update from, from your tax. I, I just encourage folks to stay really engaged on this bill. There's a lot in there, including the, the dental Medicare benefits for all and vision um, as well. And so there's a lot of um, financial implication for small businesses, for us as dental professionals, and, um, and, and maybe also a few pluses in there. So just making sure that your congressmen and senator, senators know how you feel about different parts of the bill, what you're for and what you're against to help them continue to navigate good decision-making paradigms. Um, Cause it's, it's a giant document mm. it would take. I mean, how many you think actually read the whole thing? I would put it in a very small. Mind. Yeah. I, I know. The majority of that out and then yeah. have some down like me and say, here are the things you need to be worried about. And here are the things you don't need to be worried about. Right. So. Yeah. That, but that on, you know what? I have to say this. I did get the notification that all my PPP loans were forgiven. This so week. those applications have gone out as well. So if you haven't yeah. done that yet, I would definitely encourage you to do that um, and go ahead and get that done. And we didn't really talk about this last week, but um, the HRSA has come out with another round of funding as well. There's some parameters included in there that you need to look at. And I will say, the thing that was most obvious to me, if you're struggling, you should definitely look at um, you should definitely look at the, the details within that program because there is money available to oral health professionals out there. Um, the caveat would be that you have to be able to say this amount of expense went to PPP 
this amount of expense went to HRSA round one, this amount of expense went to HRSA round two, and you better have really good documentation or a really good CPA that's helping you keep track of that because you absolutely cannot double dip and say, all my payroll, here's my payroll, mm -hmm. and use it on a report for PPP, but I'm gonna use the same payroll on a report for HRSA. They're gonna catch that and you're likely gonna be liable for that money to be paid back. So it's just really important to have really good bookkeeping and detailed reports when you're asking for this money. So this is my friend, Rob. We graduated. <laughs> we graduated she has a friend. We are back in 18, right? And, uh, I think uh, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, seems like a lifetime with COVID. And um, have a lot of fun memories along the way, uh, a couple mutual friends that, that we share. Um, but I've always been really impressed with Rob's journey with cosmetic dentistry and what he's doing in the San Francisco area. And what was even more impressive was how he took that niche market and really capitalized on some of the things that were happening with COVID and how we started to communicate virtually with our patients and really provide uh, services. And frankly, Rob, something that I've often wondered, how do we put telehealth into dentistry and execute it well, be accountable to those services? I think a lot of us are either intimidated or confused or not quite sure how it applies. And how, also, how do we schedule? You know, how do we compartmentalize that into our work week so that we can meet the needs of both our on-site patients and our virtual patients? Um, and so I'm just super excited to have those conversations with Rob and um, to dive a little bit deeper into the world of cosmetic dentistry. So without further ado, Dr. Soto, please. We're so glad you're here. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I mean, the, the burning question I have is, do you get to use shaving cream or is it just more like a bar of soap? <laughs> yeah. I totally use soap. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm a, I, I, love the virtual um, space, doing video instead of, of um, meeting people. And, and really, so it starts off with cosmetic dentistry. And, and, and for me, the, the biggest thing would be people coming into my office. And I mean, I, I want to do cosmetic, de de cosmetic dentistry. It's what I, you know, I'm trying to do. People will come in, they sit here, you don't know what's on their mind. And you do a whole mock-up on them. You do your whole exam. You spent an entire hour with them. And then you bring them back, do all your explanation, give them the price. And they're like, oh, I thought this was like, you know, a couple couple grand a for seven years or something like that, you know? And and so they're just, it's, it's just such a difficult thing. And you spent all that time, you did your beautiful mock-up, whatever it was. And then um, even just the way you're talking to them, you know, it's sort of like this game because sometimes they don't want to tell you what they're thinking. They just want to hear stuff out of your mouth. So that that always bothered me. And then um, Brian Harris is the dentist who made Smile Virtual. So he contacted me early on and told me about it. And, and to me, it was like a no brainer. This made sense to me because I was having that problem. I think I think it's more of a sell to other people. Uh, but at this point, for like, like I said, for me, it just made sense. This was this was just a tool for me to have people send me some photos, for me to just explain away all of their options. And then they could come in if that made sense to them. So rather than, I mean, in one hour, I could do, you know, five or six, well, yeah, maybe like five consultations for, for people just sitting here after work or at some point in the day. And um, I would say, you know, one or two of them will probably actually contact me and, and actually and come on in. And when they come in, they're ready to go. You know, there's not a song and dance. There's not a wondering what they're thinking. Um, so that that's on the cosmetic end. That's very specifically the virtual consultations. But but now, you know, if I'm doing a if I'm in the middle of work and I do a hygiene check and somebody wants Invisalign, I'll just tell my staff to take some pictures of the patient, make sure we have whatever X-ray we need. And then I'll contact them after. I'll just make them a video, just like you know we're doing here. But I'll put up. I'm doing a screen share, so I, I can have uh, other Invisalign examples up, all their photos up, point at stuff, send them a video. They can watch it on their own time. And then, you know, now I'm not spending because even if you spend 10 minutes in the chair talking to them about Invisalign, you know how good is that? You know, if you can actually have some new photos and have it all organized and make it real concise, then you know whoever that is she can sit down with her husband or 
or you know, husband with wife, whatever it is, and, and they can uh, look at it together and see if it's the right thing for them. And, and then they can play it over again because they're going to forget all that stuff as soon as they leave the the um, the office. But I, I, for me, it's the way to go. I, I don't even, if anybody contacts the office for anything cosmetic, it's, we just, even if they want to make an appointment, just straight to a, a virtual consultation, uh, unless they're unwilling to do that. Does it geo restrict so that you feed from patients who are most likely to come, you know, because you are active on Instagram and, and you have a, a pretty decent media presence with some of the more popular laboratories as well. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that doesn't, that doesn't happen. I mean, they're, they're going to restrict themselves. I mean, if they're willing to come see you, they'll, I mean, well, if they want information from you. They'll, they'll submit a couple of photos and just put a little description of what's going on. And, you know, I could see in their, you know, where their, where their, you know, zip code is or area code is and, uh, you know, basically just see if this is someone who's, who's local to me. So yes, if I get like a big influx of them in, in a day and I'm like overwhelmed with them, I'll probably do all of my local people first. And then when I have more time, I'll go back and do the other ones. You know, again, they're going to have a description of what it is that they want. So if someone just puts a note, someone puts like a picture and it's just sort of like, uh, you know, like hard to even see their face and, and they just write like how much, you know, like, yeah. and they're from elsewhere. I'm like, it's, it's very, you know, unless I, unless I really have a lot of time then I'm, I'm probably not going to be spending much time there or, or I'll, you know, push that to the back burner. But then it's funny because then on Instagram, I'll, I'll get people like, where's my console, you know? <laughs> like, so you saw so some of them actually are more serious. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. my question is, sorry to interrupt Rob, but I, I guess I have a burning question here. Do you use a, and feel free to plug away because I'm asking, do you use a specific platform uh, to do these virtual consults, yeah. uh, like an app or a, a software and, and which one is it and why did you choose it? Yeah. So, so the one I use is called smile virtual. That that's it. Smile virtual. And I, uh, like I said, Brian Harris is the one who made it. And I think there are a number of these things out there now, but he was one of the first ones to do it. And with them, uh, what's, what's really nice is they have support. So they're going to talk, I mean, support almost like motivational support. I mean, and, and, and the technical know-how, because you have to learn how to talk with patients and what to say and not, you know, not sound too dull. I mean, there's just, there are just better ways to do this. And so you have them helping you out. So it's more than just having the app there. Um, so yeah, Smile Virtual is what I use. Again, there's there's like a little, so there's gonna be a little link on my Instagram page. It, it's in my, uh, it's on my website. It's, it's pretty much everywhere. So everything kind of points to this page and there's some information there. Just submit two photos, ideally a selfie, and then just a picture of their smile, write down what they want, and then it gets sent over to me. And then again, it's it's up to me to make that video for them. So I'll try to make a short video, um, I'd say four to eight minutes long. And in that video, I'm pulling example photos that I have. So the nice thing about having a lot of before and afters on Instagram is I just can show those photos. So if I have their smile, and if I have a smile that I've done that you know looks appropriate, looks similar, then I can just show them. And oftentimes I'll show them more than one. You know, I'll show them four veneers, eight veneers, 10 veneers, whatever it is that, that makes sense for them. Uh, and then I'm giving them uh, an estimate. I'm giving them the, how much time I think it's going to take. So they're getting everything. And that's, that is something that also takes a while to figure out and to get comfortable with is to just look at a picture and to be comfortable to say, you know, you need an implant and eight veneers or whatever it is. So uh, and then also put a put a price in there, so it, it, you even kind of start messing around with your prices because you want them to even sound more solid, not you know not uh, eleven thousand three hundred eighty eight dollars. You just want to be eleven five or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. can I ask a question, Rob? So yeah. obviously this is something that you're doing for for free, as, as, and it's great marketing. It's I mean I'm really interested in what you're doing. So what kind of a conversion percentage do you need from that? So if you say I'm going to take an hour of my day yeah, and I don't know, are you doing that every day? Or are you doing that every other day, every third day? If you're going to take an hour, you know, what kind of a conversion rate do I need to make that worth the hour where I'm not going to have other production? 
because I get the whole part. You can do, you know, you could do five or six of those consultations in the same hour that you'd have only been able to see two patients in your practice and taken up chair time. So it's definitely, I, I see it as way, way more efficient, but what kind of a conversion rate are you, are you typically looking for? Or if you're comfortable sharing, are you seeing from, from those consultations? Right. Um, so I'm probably spending probably about three hours a week doing this and and really it's it's not fully set i mean if i I'll, if i have a hole or something like that like a little break here and there i'll try to do a couple of them um in the morning you know i, I get in early and i'll just try to punch out a couple of them uh if they start to build up and then, then i'm i'm coming in and i'm gonna spend an hour and a half to just blast through a bunch of them uh, i would say this is just off the top of my head i would say what i need would be like one in ten to to come through because again these are big procedures i mean this is your right. This is your hopefully your 10 unit veneer right, right, right. You're doing yeah. that you want to do and it's, you know you get good money for it um but i think it's, it's definitely better than that it's probably somewhere in the in the you know uh, maybe even three out of ten of them will, will will realistically come in and again that's with a little bit of filtering through some of them you know you're not i mean yeah i could i, I could actually you know do a bunch of them that i feel like are, i'm very confident in i mean there could be a week where I get six of them in and I'm looking at all six of them and be like, none of these are going to happen. You know, it's still worth yeah. doing because I've been surprised before. Uh, but then I'll have another week while I got six in and I'm like, oh, I'm five for six here. So, so just- I love, I love the, the fact that you're kind of flexible about when they're going to happen. They're not these hard scheduled events because I think something you just said is really powerful is that you said, you know, if I get, you know, I finish a procedure early or somebody doesn't show up or somebody's sick, that's time that you are not going to be productive anyway. Right. And why not use that time versus adding additional time to the end of your day, taking time away from family, et cetera. So I think then it even becomes, I, so tell us a little bit more about that flexible scheduling. So if you say, okay, I've got a break, how have you communicated with those patients that, uh, you know, here's how I'm going to contact you. Here's, here's how this is going to go down. Well, I think, I think vir- the term virtual consultation is very confusing. If you just put up there, um, you know, contact me for a virtual consultation. What does that mean? They, they might think that you're going to do a FaceTime with them. They might think you're going to send a picture and they're going to get a simulation back. So it is important that wherever you are promoting this, that there's some level of description about this. So if it's on Instagram, you know, in your, like in my highlights reel there, it, it, you know, the first thing is what is a virtual consultation or something about that. So just me, I'm probably wearing scrubs, (laughs) just, just explaining like what you're going to get, send me a couple of photos. I'm going to give you all of your options personally, and it's going to be a quick breakdown. If you want to do it, you know, there's, a couple buttons that you'll be able to press to ask me a question or to schedule. So that's important so that they know what's going on. Same thing on your website. If you could either have a video or some sort of explanation about it. Um, and, and that way they just sort of know what they're, they're, they're going to get. So again, this is why this platform is really good. And again, maybe the other, I, I just don't know about what the other ones are, but all that explanation is in there because it's, it's a bit confusing to, to, to someone sending you photos, like, why should I do this? What are you going to do with this? Um, when will I hear from you? You know, and that, that is a challenge too, because sometimes these things do build up. Um, and it, it just, it, it can, it can be like two weeks, three weeks, sometimes before someone gets a consultation back from me, depending on the, the backlog and how busy you are with your own work schedule. So, so that, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just want to walk us through the process. So, you're on it, it. It's an Instagram or or social media platform. They say they just reach out to you through a text, like what we have in our Facebook group. They reach out to you through a text and say, "I would like a virtual consultation." And is there a reply right then, or or how how does that go? Yeah. No. So so uh, this is always how it seems to work. I'll post the case on Instagram, a nice before and after. It gets attention and then 
um, in my post, it'll say, you know, something brief about the, the case I just did, you know, 10 veneers, smile makeover, whatever. And then it'll say, and then my next line is, you know, if you are interested in cosmetic dentistry, porcelain veneers, click the link in my bio, send me a couple of photos and I'll send you a video consultation about, you know, your teeth or so something along those lines. So now they can go to my bio and, uh, and click that button and, and then it, it goes to a, it's just going to open up a page where they can actually, you know, they'll type in their name, their information, and, um, just drop in two photos. So they can just take the photos on their cell phone and it will, then I'll get an email and that, and it, I think it'll, they'll get an email response. Like, you know, your consultation has been submitted, give it a, a week or something like that. And. Mm -hmm. I get an email that says that I have a new virtual consultation lead. Um, so then I'll, I'll go into mine. So I think we got like, you know, three or four of them today. So I'll go in and take a look at them. And, and if I have time, I'll, I'll start recording a consultation for them. And the thing is you have done something for free that they were not expecting. That's very personal from personal, from a doctor, you know? Um, so it, it, it blows their mind. I mean, it is it, like, you know, you'll get an email back like, oh, thank you so much, you know, um, if it's for them or not for them. I mean, and, um, and again, and there's buttons on there too. So if they, if they hear it and, and at the end, I pretty much tell them like, this is just information, you know, you, you can move forward with this if you want to, you can hold on to it. Maybe it's for the future, but if you have questions, press this button. If you have, if you're ready to go, let's press this button. And someone's going to reach out to you. So then my office gets another email if they press that button and it's just basically their phone number. So they'll, they'll call them up and even my, I mean, my staff, they'll, they, they'll, they'll have like a little printout of what it is that I talked to the patient or, you know, presented to the patient. And, um, and then it's so it's, it's not a live telehealth then it's not a live. Right. Telehealth. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you Got can it. do that. No, route. but this, this makes total sense because you're able to do this all on your time without having to worry about a scheduled appointment with anyone. So Absolutely. I love that. Well, yeah. and Jeff, you could do that with sleep. I mean, think about if you uploaded a few documents. I could do that could, while I sleep? Not while you sleep. With oh. Jeff Primer, I mean, he does a huge, his huge focus is uh, TMJ and sleep. Um, and so, you know, how could you incorporate that in your world to eliminate those soft leads that come in who sit down and you say, yeah, these are the things you could do. And then they're like, oh, I thought you were just going to fix it, you know, just yeah. or whatever, <laughs> or I thought it was free or, you know, whatever it happens to be. So I'm sure that there's a lot of application within dentistry, not just cosmetic dentistry that we could utilize this for to sort of oh, no help. doubt. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's an orthodontist it. who does a ton of this stuff. He does even more than I do. Um, so I, I only know of one that does it. So. Mm. Yeah, lots of applications. Uh, Rob, where is your practice? I'm in San Francisco, so I'm right downtown in Union Square. Very. Oh, you uh, are okay. I thought that's what I read, but I wasn't sure. And so that that's great. I mean, what what a way to capture a market. I love how you manage expectations for the patient as to what they're going to get. But in talking to you, I love how you manage the expectations for dentists who are thinking that maybe this is something that you do. And it's a great attitude to have because you're like, well, if I get one out of every 10, then I'm happy because these, these, these are kind of pie in the sky and you're not going to get every single one of them. You know, if somebody thinks they're going to get 10 out of 10, they've got another thing coming to them. But with what you're doing, I think that your, your conversion rate will probably increase over the years or your cons or, or your consultations will increase so much that your conversion rate remains the same, but you still get a ton of patients. From right. It. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it works. It works very well. Um, I, and it is also like a bit of a skill because you have to learn to to get to the point and to not bore them, and and um, also like figure out what they want. You know, a lot of people you you do need you need to say some technical things, but really it's it's emotion. You know, they they want to know what this is going to do for me. So if you're sitting there saying, you know, we we use some really good bonding technique over in this <laughs> office, like that doesn't matter. They want to yeah. They want to know that it that it's potentially going to change their life. So I That's understand great. you trained at uh, at UOP. Is that correct? I went to UOP Dental School. Yes. Yes, and so you might know um, some some professional uh, uh, 
friends of ours, Dr. Uh, Farid Hakim. Oh, yeah. And and Dr. Mark Geisberger. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So and Dr. Brian Baliwas. Dr. Brian Baliwas, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's Was Brian, Brian teaching at UOP ever? No, but no, no, because for Farood and, and Mark were teach. Actually, Mark was head of uh, restorative dentistry, I think. Yeah, that, I, well, I don't know when that was, but that I when I was there, he was the head of, of restorative. So yeah, it was, uh, Dr. Hakeem, yeah, yeah, and um, and, and did and Farood share any of his dry humor with you at all, or no? Uh, some. I, well, was he a hard ass? ass? I'll have to get on him if he's a hard ass. <laughs> He was he was fine. He was great. He was, he was very <laughs> here. No, I'm just kidding. He's good. <laughs> yeah, we love Rudy. Um, so I wanted to ask Rob. So I know yeah. you did Kois, obviously. Yeah. I know that you did. Um, I think it's important too when you're talking about cosmetic dentistry and getting into these really big cases. Um, number one, understanding your level of training to get right. to that point. I don't I don't know if enough people appreciate that. Certainly not you know, lay folks or non-dental folks, but even the average young dentist who's coming online and saying, oh, I want to be like Dr. Rob. I want to do the types of cases that he's doing. There's a journey and a process to get there. So you can talk about your own personal journey. You can also talk about um, good educational resources for yourself, or if you're providing those educational resources for docs who are looking to do more cosmetic dentistry, and how you stay relevant relevant in that process. Right. Um, yeah, so I definitely went to Kois. I think something that really, really helped me a lot, and I, I just, I, I always feel bad saying this because I don't really have a good source for this, but I, I was able to do a hands-on course early on. It was through the dental lab, Hunter Dental Lab that I, that, uh, that I was using. And so before I ever even went to Kois, I did a case and I kind of, you know, sent it over to the lab and they're like, this is impossible, you know, pretty much. And, and I talked with uh, one of the head lab techs and he pretty much gave me a um, Koista programmer and kind of walked me through how to use it. So I used a Koista programmer well before I went to Koist. And then, you know, you doing these hands-on courses, you can, I mean, I think it's so good because even before you take the classes, uh, I, you know, you have a doctor behind you, but you just get to feel what it's like to have a whole, you know, 10 or 12 teeth prepped. And if it's the first time you've ever done it, you know, the first time you do it, you're like, whoa, we're in the middle of something right now. You know, <laughs> like you're in the thick <laughs> uh, And you just have that little moment of, of, of realization of what you just did to somebody. So <laughs> you, go to, you get those cases done. We, we, all, we all have squirmed in those seats. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Haven't redone any of those cases at, at all. So they're all, they're all still lasting, but then you go to Kois and like it is just so clear what's going on because it's it's not just didactic. I mean, you you're living you're you're learning this off of your experience. Um, you're re you're remembering all these things. It's not just so. When the first time I do this, I'm gonna you know take this information I'm learning. No, you've already done that before. So anyway, that that is a great thing if you can get something under your belt before you attend one of these big classes like Kois. Uh, so it's you know there's there's experience and there's something like Kois and, and really, I feel like Kois has done so much for me not getting, knowing when to stay out of trouble. And, and I would say as simple as just making sure you understand the importance of good overjet before you try to do something pretty on teeth. Like if you don't have that and you think you're just going to get away with some veneers, one, it's either not going to look good because it's going to be very short, whatever you're going to do. Or two, it's going to break or be extremely thin and very fragile and it'll eventually break. So I feel like those are those those things are there. I, I mean, I don't use the, the Koisa programmer a heck of a lot. Um, I do. Uh, I definitely do sometimes, but it's not it doesn't it doesn't it's not incorporated into all of my cases. I mean, if it's cosmetics, you know, four veneers, 10 veneers, you don't always have to do that. Oftentimes you just got to send them to I mean, you just do it or you might do a little bit Invisalign first. That's about it. I love it. It's awesome. Uh, I mean, kudos to you for what you're doing. Kudos to you for your Instagram following. Thank you. I, I think uh, 1,200 plus virtual consults. So that's 120 cases. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk to you soon. <laughs> but no, great, great, great stuff. Thank JP, you so much. did you know much. Chad could do math? I actually think he'd already figured that out on his calculator. I didn't know. I actually saw him. I, like, I saw him actually with his face down, pen to paper. I, yeah. <laughs> I totally knew it. But I knew Sorry. he couldn't do it. He well, I love it. Yeah, the kids, the kids had the abacus, so I had to use the iPhone. <laughs> um I'm so glad you were on tonight. Uh, it, it's yeah, fun it's good to see your face because I haven't seen you in a really long time with COVID and everything else. Yeah. It's fun to watch your journey online. It's fun to see your colleagues succeed um, and Thank love you. what they're doing and be good at it. And I, I love this. This was awesome. I, I got to check in uh, every Wednesday. Every yeah, Wednesday. Every Wednesday. It's exhausting. It's, wait, it's live and, and it's, it's over, over a cocktail. A cocktail. Okay. <laughs> so I I just I want to show this because I I think we've, we've said this a lot tonight, but all four of us can certainly relate to this. Um, one of our users, I can't see who it was. It was it I was it was I, my boy David Dudlick. David, I, I just want to let you know in that my office. He's one of my son's close friends from middle school and high school, and I'm so proud of him. Well, David, I'll tell you what, buddy, you're not alone. We all have had the pucker factor from delivering our first set of an ears. And, you know, there's even cases that I do to this day, 22 years, that I still have the pucker factor on. Yeah, so don't no worry, doubt. buddy. I'm just trying no to tell doubt. you a nice way it ain't going to go away quick. So, yeah, don't you, you'll never lose that muscle mass, the, the pucker, <laughs> the pucker muscle. <laughs> so I will tell you, though, I think one of the big pieces of that is having a good relationship with your lab. And I know Rob has a really good relationship with his lab. Um, how does that develop over time? How do you communicate your expectations? How do you give them what they need? Because I do think there's still there's always this disconnect. I don't do lab work. So I I understand how to do dentistry, but I don't know what the challenges are on their end because I've never made a pressed veneer. Right. So. I'm assuming what I know, but I, I don't understand fully. So how do you build that relationship and how do you get deliverables that you're excited to put in people's mouths? Yeah. You know, that, that is a, that's a great question. And it's, I feel like there's just, there's a lot to it. I mean, obviously it develops over time. I do think that like sticking with the same lab and kind of working with them and that way you are, I mean, here's the thing is like, the, the lab that I use is, is Frontier Dental. That's the main one. The, the, there is another lab that I'll use occasionally. Um, but with, with Frontier, I've been using them for a very long time. And they, they, the way they market is, is it's really aggressive. And so they have a lot of dentists. I mean, they, they've told me that, you know, before they used to have to go out and try to get someone to give them one crown or a couple try us, you know, and now they just get um you know fedex boxes with an impression for 16 veneers and they they have no clue who the doctor is like that's that's what's going on with them and so they're expecting something beautiful so they're you know doctors like myself and other doctors who actually post their beautiful work it's sort of like, you know they they only have so many master ceramists and at this point because i've been using them for 10 plus years that you know i i do get to to, to use the guy I want to use. I, I don't ever get bumped to somewhere else or be told that there's not enough time to do my case. Um, so I think, I think that's part of it. I think definitely giving impeccable records is part of it. You know, if you, if, I mean, this is a little bit of a guess, but I think if someone's sitting down with beautiful photography, with beautiful impressions, like my guess is they're, they're happy to work on this case, you know? Um, it, it, I, and I feel like a common thing would be like someone takes an impression. Sure. You've got those eight veneers, but the molars, you didn't even get the molars or something like that. So the model's a, a total mess to begin with. Anyway, so I think records are really important. Um, and I, I do think that you need to be good at communicating what you want, not just yelling at them when it's not right. Okay. Like you cannot, Amen. Um, yeah. yeah, you cannot say something was wrong without being very specific about what needs to be changed. And that will, you know, set set the tone for what you want going forward. And you can actually develop a style with them. And the other thing about labs is they're your 
so this is like a side note my my buddy he's getting he's doing veneers on his wife and he doesn't really do veneers and he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna use frontier rob um and i'm like okay you know like is there you can do this on your wife all right so he's like he's i'm gonna use them i'm gonna ask for ideal i'm like you're just gonna like write ideal like that's what you're gonna do so you know you gotta know <laughs> you gotta know what it is that you're gonna you're gonna tell them very specifically um and and just be able to communicate that in in some very clear way i personally like video i like sending them send them a video pointing stuff out on the video of of what it is that they that i want from them um i like to get pictures back from them even mid case if if uh if that's what's called for and i'll draw on those and send it back and everything is very quick though it sounds like i'm being like a total stickler on these things but but everything is just a quick text or something like you know something easy so I, I think that you hit on a couple of things that I really hit on when I when I speak to groups is that, you know, you've got to communicate, you've got to provide a lot of attaboys, but you've got to find a contact in the lab to start with and hold that contact accountable at the lab. And I always say, if you ask for a veneer on number seven, you're going to get a veneer on number seven. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got to be able to appropriately ask for a veneer on number seven and communicate verbally written and with images as well to that lab technician as to what you want and why and the anticipated outcome because if you don't and you just get a veneer, veneer on number seven you're the waiter that brings the food to the table you're the one that's always going to get shamed you can blame the lab all you want but ultimately it's your fault so you know, I, I, I yeah, think you know, I, I put so so I always send an example photo to the to the lab of the case, you know, whatever, whatever I want. But the same thing is you can't just send that photo. You need to point out what about this photo correlates over to our our case. And the thing is, a lab tech sees things different than 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 I see. You know, if I'm if I'm looking at the, you know, the edge shape or some sort of line angles. Uh, they may be looking at the translucency or the color or just the texture. So like you have to point out exactly what about this case is, is what you were trying to hit on. Exactly. Well, yeah. guys, we're at 929. So we have to close this out. Uh, but Rob, I, I love, I love talking with you. I love what you're doing. I think, um, I, I think you motivated a lot of dentists tonight for sure. Um, we had a lot of good engagement. I love what you said about not just complaining when it's wrong, making okay. sure that you, you know, they put a lot of space on a lab slip to write so you can write what you want, <laughs> not so you can write veneer number seven, like Chad said. So yes, um, ideal, ideal, yeah, veneer ideal. Number seven. That, thanks ideal. for all your tips and your tricks. And, um, hopefully we'll get you back sometime soon. And, um, and just thanks for taking time out to be with us.